Baptist Church. It started with number 92. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above while mortals sleep the watch of wandering love O morning star together proclaim a holy and praises sing to God the King silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this Though we be few, we are mighty. That's Shakespeare, by the way. Um, Andy, will you open us up in prayer? Okay. Um, our upcoming events... Saturday the 16th is Mary Tucker is having her open house at 3 p.m. Um, just bring your own beverage. If you like coffee, she doesn't know how to make it, so you might have to bring a coffee pot too. But uh, anyway. In the 17th, they're having a budget meeting after the morning service. So, I mean, that's going to be the board's budget meeting, correct? I got you. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, I asked um, Sherry to put out an email. If you guys, some of you may remember Bobby Russell, who stayed with us for a while. He, um, his sister just had a um, cancer operation, colon cancer. She's on a permanent colostomy bag. There's no, there's no reversing what they've done. I ask you to pray for her. I'm going to try to get down there and speak with her. Um, but that's a pretty nasty. She's 35 years old. So Anyway. And in the next month or a couple months, um, 
There's going to be a guy coming to church with us. His name is Rod Linares, and he's been here before, but he's been incarcerated for the last seven years for a domestic uh, argument. And uh, I, I, I've been talking to him. I've, we've got to do a home inspection. He's going to come stay with us for six months or so. But I just ask you to pray that he uh, gets out, he gets a job, he's trying to get his license and all squared away before he gets out. And most of those guys have tax issues and driver's license issues and all that. I don't think that's the case here, but anyway. What's his name? Rod Linares. Uh, I've known him for 30, 40 years. Pull it up. All right, can you hear me better now? Okay. Maybe if I talk up a little bit, huh? Jackie, how's your horse? It's better than me. Amen. All right. Good. Good. I've been thinking about it. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Moving right along. Um, we sang a Christmas carol tonight, and we had some better Christmas play. And uh, who in this room has sung the carol, The First Noel? Does anybody know what Noel means? Hmm? Yeah, it means, uh, to be born. To be born. Yeah. Well, it, it is. It's kind of, but that's what the uh, and and the and the uh, the variation in the Hebrew is to um, give birth. But the first Noel that really counts is the birth of Jesus Christ, and that's where that came from. I never knew what that word meant. I'm sitting there every now and then, light turns on and something happens. Anyway, Billy would be back there fervently searching the internet. Noel, to be born, yes. Okay, all right. That is, yes, you're exactly right. And that, that symbolizing a couple different things has been... It's been symbolized over the world since we started celebrating Christmas on a pagan holiday. Now that we've got this discussion totally screwed up, thank you, Billy, we will move on. Salvation. Anybody witnessed anybody this week? Tell me about it. And who, what's your name? Okay. We need to put, pray for Andrew Rosso, and if he's your apprentice, you should have a good time, a lot of time with him. Good, good. Anybody else witness anybody? When, did he call you on the phone? <laughs> right. Hey, that's a that's a target rich environment. It's called a cell phone. Mine rings all the time but with the one, and then the area code. You know, it's a robo call. So, anyway, good. That's good practice. You know, you know, it's a, a, that's an objection. You close on objections. So, overcome conditions. All right, anybody else for salvation? Yes, sir. Randy Latimer? Latimer. Latimer, okay. Uh, salvation, friend of Andy's. All right, anybody else? Sickness. Has anybody had a conversation with Mark? I was talking to Dave um, Spurgeon today. He's one of our evangelists we support. He's had a, he had a he had a gold mine in a, in a prison. That's 
captured audience. But he's in doing a revival 70 miles from his house, and he's a little 14-year-old girl got saved last night. That's, that's a blessing. You know? But uh, he hasn't talked with Mark. Has anybody had any conversations with him? Yeah. Uh, do we want to maybe think about doing another? Maybe you can check with Alan and find out, you know. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I couldn't go six months without. Well, I'd be out of money, but, I mean, you know, it, it extended budgets are great. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else for sickness? Okay. Others, we got Mrs. Quarter Horse Hospital. Okay, let God be the handle of God handle the disposition of the case. I, I told you about my friend uh, Rod Linares. He says the best seven years he's ever spent. He's he's read his Bible more times than ever. All righty. Anybody else? Mrs. Quarterhorse is fine or better. All right, good, good. Are you getting those horse things I'm sending you? Yeah, okay. I haven't looked at them today. But All right, okay. Um, ladies with child. As you're making... You, Was that her right there in the back? Yeah. Okay. He's an ordained minister, huh? In his name again? And your wife's name? She's on there, Maddie. Maddie, okay. Yeah, she's on there. She's on there. Just keep, just keep her extra prayer. It's, a great, it's really on a great part. He's really pushing it. And uh, Aiden Sampson talked to him. And, uh, just pray that my wife stays away. He talked to him to his mom. Says, uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Is he, is he in Warsaw? I guess so. He's down below Richmond. Okay. All right. All right. So it's uh, unspoken. Yeah, well, like, I don't know what the decision will be in the asking for, but right now he's been trying eight weeks to get something called commissary where you order things and everybody's getting nerves and he doesn't know why he's not getting paid. Um. I, I, there's an inmate in uh, California that I send stuff to. If you don't send it from a bookstore, they don't care. Yeah, and he can't, like, he wants to write mom and dad, and he's asked for eight, to get eight times in eight weeks for stamps and stuff, but somehow his paper is disappearing and everybody else is getting it. So it's kind of, I know it's about something simple. And it's Does he have a JPay account? Can you fund it? Oh, they just won't let him get it? He can't get it from the commissary? Write him a letter and put stamps in there. I think they send them back. Really? Wow. They take it out. I sent him three stamped envelopes and he never gets them. Huh. Wow. Um, that's on you. Well, it's it. they do what they want. So. 
Um, we had a busy, busy month here, and um, I think the lease is probably wore out. Yes, sir. Okay. Fusible link kind of thing. I don't even think you can get in the door for two hundred seventy-seven dollars. <laughs> Yeah. What what is the the labor rate? Is it now 190 bucks or something like that? 170, 180, 90. Yeah. It's still a lot. It's 300. Gotcha. I'm with you. All right. It's been a busy, busy week. We've got um, uh, Samson Ryman going to be at Timmy Black's this Saturday and Sunday. You can't go Sunday, but you can go Saturday. Uh, I enjoyed all the preaching. I enjoyed the, the play. Yes, sir. Brother Black actually begins early at 6 o'clock, so you can make it there after here. Oh, on Sunday. On Sunday. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you everybody hear that? He has a 6 o'clock evening service, and we can make it from here. Um, yes, ma'am. I'd like to praise God that that sleigh came together. If you'd have been here for any of the practices, you thought, there's no way that this is even going to be interesting. Yeah. That's, that was my next question. How many people? Because Amen. Amen. Well, folks, we had 140 some people in here. Is that correct? I re did I read that right? I mean, look around. We got plenty of empty seats. We could, you know, and it's okay if, if they sit on each other's lap. If that's how many people come in here, I don't care. You know, that's what I was, we were talking about the old bar. We probably had a hundred, well, there's a, I got a picture here that I brought in, I showed Chuck, but we probably had a hundred plus people there. And the only reason we went to that bar was because it had four bathrooms. But in the, in the summertime, the well was shallow and everybody hit the bathroom at the same time. You had to bring your own water to flush the toilet. But God was there. I didn't care, man. You know, we had black mold in the ceiling. It was just a great place. I loved it. So, no, and nobody had any pulmonary issues. Go figure that. All right. Anybody have anything else? Yes, sir. started praying a lot more about God, I need help with this, I need every day, I need help with this, and I'm struggling with it, and um, Monday they told me my services were no longer required, so I uh, just thank God for making the decision for me, and moving things along, and 
Yeah. Makes the decision process easier, doesn't it? Do you have any uh, bleeds or? I have a couple of bleeds, but it looks like some of them are flying and I've got an application already. So just thank God for <laughs> pushing me, I guess. Yeah. And if you want to know what I'm doing or you want to know what happened to here, go through this door. And yeah. Sometimes when we go into the decision process, we put more in the in the process that needs to be. A decision is between two things. A choice is when you put more than two in there. And we suck at choices, folks. We don't make good choices. So make good decisions. So anybody have anything else? All right, Howard, would you pray for the sick list and the pastor's message tonight? I'm, you're pre preaching tonight, right, Pastor? Okay, pastor's message. Oh, yes. So I couldn't hear that. Okay, Leah Black, keep her in the, um, prayer. And I, I, this is just something off the cuff, and I don't know how, how legal this would be, but we're now out on the Internet, and we're saying people's names. We might be violating some HIPAA laws, so... I don't know how to respond to that sometimes. But. Well, I will say you can't, well, you can't, you can't hear it. <laughs> okay, well, I was given orders to repeat it. <laughs> so. Okay, I just, I just want to bring it out. I mean, we're in a precarious time. And uh, anything they could do to, to, you know, and Lord help us if we start filling the place up and winning souls, they'd be shutting us down in a heartbeat for something stupid like that. All right, nothing else? You have the floor, honey. Five hundred and six. Five hundred and six. Meet me there. Let's see, I'm going to sing five oh six. On that happy golden shore, where the faith will part no more. Five hundred and six. Just think, you get to spend forever with these people. It's a lot easier if you start getting along with them now. 
Uh, I'd rather spend forever with y'all than anyone else. 506. Meet me there. On that happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, when the storms of life are o'er, meet me there. Where the night dissolves away into pure and perfect day, I am going home to stay. Meet me there. Meet me there. Happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Where our fondest hopes are vain, dearest links are rent in twain, but in head no throb of pain, meet me there. By the river sparkling bright in that city of delight, where our faith is lost to sight, meet me Part no more, where the faithful part no more meet me there. Where the harps of angels ring and the blessed forever sing in the palace of the king, meet me there. Where in sweet communion blend heart with heart and friend with friend, in a world that ne'er shall end, meet me there. seated. Pastor Joseph. I was wondering if she was going to climb the stairs and come up and have a shouting fit. <laughs> Evelyn was heading toward the altar and nobody wouldn't let her go there. Say, I knew better, right? Yeah, that's right. I think Brother Hunter brought up something that's probably a smart thing in this day and age. <laughs> better be careful. Better be safe than sorry, I would su suggest. Um, and <laughs> How many people ever heard of the term, don't call the dogs on me? You ever heard that term? Uh, go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Did Timothy say that? I think he said that. Let me see if I can find it. I, I got it on, I thought, but I'll do it again for you, Billy. No, it's not on there. How about now? Billy? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, I've never been much of a hunter. I thought Jackie might have heard that before, but uh, she's she's a hunter, I, not a not a Howard hunter. <laughs> she. <laughs> but um, years ago, when it was time for the hunt to be over, they'd call the dogs back in, and that's what the term means. Anyway, look at Second Timothy, if you would. Second Timothy, we'll try not to be too long. I'm trying to let you guys out of here. I know a lot of you have to get up and go to work pretty early in the morning. Andy leaves, oh, dark 30 and all that stuff. So a uh, crane operator's job, whether you know it or not, he's a, he is, without question, him and the superintendent, the last person on the job because they never know when they need a lift and they can't lift it without the crane operator, right? All right, uh, if you would, 2 Timothy chapter 4 and look at verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 4 
in verse 6. I sit here most of the day. Um, well, Serena and I have been up here since about 12 o'clock, 1230. Um, Chapter 4, verse 1, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Amen. Say, I don't know what to do. Preach the word. Just give them the word. Let, let them wrestle with it. Amen. I don't know what it means. The Bible says this. Boom. Uh, I know Rene Myers did it one time, and he said he, five or six times this guy was going to the store and he said, the wages of sin is death. And he's preaching on the street, and the guy goes by, and he forgot the list that his wife had sent him to go get stuff. So he had to turn around and be prior. This is prior to the cell phone. And he turned around and come back. And he, bam, bam, bam. And he's hitting it again. And the guy goes by, and he has to come back through to go back to the store with the list. And after he got the list, he's hearing it again. He gets the list, he gets the stuff in the store, and he's coming back, and he, right, Renee said, the guy stood across the street like, do I go back and do this again? And he goes, the wages of sin. And the guy says, I know it's death and the gift of God. He said, I'm just trying to tell you that it works, man, it works. But he said, uh, for in verse 6, he said, I'm now ready to be offered up in the time of my departure is at hand. Amen. I fought a good fight, have you? I've finished my course, are you? I have kept the faith, did you? Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me in that day, not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Let me ask you a question. You love his appearing? Oh, I long for it. Do thy diligence to come, bef uh, come shortly unto me, for Demas hath forsaken me having loved this present world. Amen? And have departed unto Thessalonica, uh, the Cyrenes of Galatia, and Titus unto Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Take, take Mark and bring him with thee, for he has profitable me for the ministry. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you, and we thank you, God, for tonight, for your uh, blessed in this little message, in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. You know, as a preacher, you're constantly trying to figure out what to preach, what to say. I've been up here for about seven and a half hours now and uh, kept going over things and one over this and one over that. But years ago, I wasn't much of a hunter. Now, some of you still hunt and like it. I don't have any problem with it if you like doing it and you enjoy it. You want to kill Bambi, go ahead and help yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Smile. Uh, I, I like Bambi. I like it. Jerky, I like it. You ever take uh, deer meat and put it in with, uh, you, you have to put, what is it, the talc, the fat you have to put in it in order to make it, yeah, because it's so dry, you wouldn't be able to do much with it. But I didn't know the expression, but you take dogs and you put them out, and they would go out and they'd try to, I, I had a dog that would run, literally run a deer down and run him, try to run him back to me. Seriously, I, I got, I know one, I think two that way. But um, when it's all over and the hunt's over, they say, all right, call the dogs in, call the dogs in, it's all done. And I want to tell you, hearing what we've heard in the last few days, it's not time to call the dogs in yet. Everybody's getting ready to fold the tent and walk away and say, well, I did my best. No, we're still here. We still got work to do. There's still people that are dying on their way to hell, still saints of God that are slipping out and getting backslidden on God. We need to encourage them, not talk about them, not push them down. We need to try to get them back up on their feet. Why? It's not time to call the dogs in yet. We still have time to do something. We still have breath. Brother Hunter, there's still people in the Philippines that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's still people, Andy, on your job. They don't need to hear it so much as they need to see it. And what's happening in this day and age, we're folding the tent. We're calling them in and saying, all right, the hen's hit. It's over with. Uh, we're looking for the rapture. Are you looking for it? Looking for that glorious appearing of great God and our Savior? Amen. I'm looking for it. And I'm longing for it. I love it. I'd love to see it happen. And would it bother you if it happened tonight? Wouldn't bother me a lick. 
But there are people of God that have gotten away from God, and what are we doing to encourage them to get back to God? We need to be encouraging. I mean, it's easy to talk about them. It's easy to say, well, I thought that. I had a guy one time tell me, he says, well, I knew they wouldn't stay. Man, I wish you would have prayed, brother, and say that. You, did you do anything to encourage him to stay? Did you do anything? Did you pray for him? Did you try to lift him up? Did you look say, Lord, boy, I wish to God. Uh, some, some of them had family. Amen? They have kids that are not in church because mom and dad's out. Where are they going to hear about God in a public school system? No, I don't think so. They can't even get genders right in the public school anymore. What, what are they going to do there? You say, what? I say, it's not time to call the dogs in. We still got work to do. There's still people dying and going to hell, and we need to wake up and smell the coffee. I didn't get to preach, but I thought there are souls still to be saved. The Bible says in Psalms 51, 5, Behold, I, shall, uh, I was shapen in iniquity, and the sin doth my mother conceive me. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Brother, there's still people that's dying and going to hell, and we're afraid to show them. We're afraid to tell them. We're afraid to open. Brother, I almost got kicked off. It wasn't for Buddy Cargill. I'd have been fired on a couple jobs. But Buddy, would, he would aggravate it, Chuck. You know how Buddy was. Yeah, what's wrong with him? What's wrong with Bob? <laughs> he'd get to that chuddy laugh of his, and he'd laugh, and he'd say, well, no, tell me what's wrong. What's he doing? And Buddy knew what I was doing. I told him what I did. We have those big walls all the way. They run about 50, 60, 70 foot, and they're purifying walls to run that sludge and all that garbage through there. And they, those, those carpenters were up on the wall, and they couldn't go nowhere. Where are they going to go? They couldn't go anywhere. So I'd stand at the end of the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You say, you did that? Yeah, I did it. That's back when I was fired up for God. But at the end of that thing, we had five people on that job get saved by the grace of God. I wished I could say I was as fired up today as I was then. Say, what happened? I think sometimes we are longing for this coming, looking for his coming, and we're calling the dogs in. We still got work to do. There's still souls that need to be saved. Amen. Yeah. The people are dying and going to hell. I want to see somebody get saved. That lady, when she told that, she walked up to me. Uh, one of the people that raised her hand was her and Elise are pretty close. And those two young boys, they've come to, what, two years, Shirley, two years straight or something. They've been, they come to the vacation Bible school stuff. And them boys like it. They like it here. I said, yeah, we like this church. And the mother told me, she said, preacher, um, I think we're going to start coming. So why? Because somebody here showed them that Christians aren't stupid. Somebody here showed them, you know, I thought Samson did a good job when he got up. I said, give him five minutes and just lightly give him the gospel and see what will happen. That lady raised her hand. I want to be saved. And sit back there with Elise. And she said, preacher, I talked with her a while. And she says, I don't know that I can make every Sunday morning uh, she said, but, you know, I try to, I work six days a week, and I'm there all day on Monday through uh, uh, Saturday, but uh, Lord willing, I'll be there Sunday morning or your Sunday evening service one. You say, well, that's not getting off. It's a start. Take a little bit that you can get and take it. There's people, I think there were seven people that Samson told me, and not all of them were children. Three of them were adults that raised their hand for to say, I want to be saved. You know what? It's not time to call the dogs in yet. There's still work to be done. Amen? The Bible tells us the wages of sin. The Bible, Jesus says he's the only Savior. He was our sin offering, a first Peter sacrifice. He has satisfied the Father in Isaiah chapter 55. Man's need is salvation because of his condition. He's without God and without hope. Amen? Well, I told you it wasn't much, but there's a servants to be reclaimed. Rather than talk about them, rather than laugh at them, rather than mock them, are we trying to get them back up on their feet? 
I know what it feels like. It took me a, a few years to get back with God. That's when Buddy got me. See, Buddy wasn't afraid to say anything to me. First off, I knew he loved me because he always tried to take care of me. Secondly, he's too big for me to swing at. Amen. I didn't want to die, <laughs> especially in the condition I was in. But he'd stand there and he'd say, Bob, I know you're saved. But if you don't get right with God, if you don't get this thing straightened out, he's going to take you home. You say, ah, he wouldn't have done that. Scared the fire out of me. I don't know whether he would or not, but he could if he wanted to. What good was I doing him? I wasn't doing him any good. I was showing him the wrong side of Christianity. That's why I can't tolerate people when they start looking down their nose at somebody else. I can't handle that. You're nothing but a sinner saved by the grace of God. And the truth be known, every day of your life, you probably let God down. Amen, amen, amen. You say, that's been pretty rough, preacher. No. What do you think he thought about Demas? It said, Demas has forsaken me. You know what we read when we read, we read about a quitter, Brother Hunter, amen? Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. He looked at the world and the things of the world rather than at God, the God who saved him. I don't want, do you, anybody here ever name their child Demas? Wonder why. He didn't have a good testimony, did he? Hello? <laughs> Amen, brethren. I'm just trying to tell you something. Not time to call on dogs. Hey, listen, even Demas needs to get right. Things need to get, you need to give people a chance. You need to pray for them. Lord, they're out, God. What can I do? How can I help? What can I do to be a help to them, Lord? Let them see Jesus Christ in me. Let them see. I've been down, and Lord, how you picked me back up. It ain't time to quit. It ain't time to quit hunting. When you put, call the dogs in, you're saying the hunt's over. No, it's not. We need to still go out and get them. Bring them in. I, brother, brother Hunter knows, too, there's guys we went to Bible school with. They're off the King James Bible. You say, they lost? No, they ain't lost. If they got saved, they got saved. But they're going in the wrong direction, letting off the wrong testimony. What do you say? Leave them? No, get them up. Ask God to help them. Ask God to wake them up. I know one thing. That unshackle scared the life out of me. Laid there half drunk, messed up, saved as saved can be, brother. You say, that wasn't God talking to you. Well, maybe it was my mind. Maybe it was my whatever. But I, I can tell you one thing. When unshackle came on and that thing went, Scared the life out of me. I broke up and woke up in a cold sweat. I'm laying there, and there's this voice that says, you better come back. You better come back. Looked around in that room. Wasn't nobody there. He said, yeah, there was. Yeah, it was the Spirit of God saying, you better get back. You better get it right, boy. Don't make me bring you home. Even right now, it bothers me. I remember falling in water, trying to help my nephew, who had slipped into a, a current that was going. We were doing heron fishing, and he slipped in that water, and I was trying to help him get out. I fell in. I remember, you say, it's, you're a stupid preacher. Well, I might be stupid, but it scared me enough. And I laid down in that water, Brother Hunter, and I looked up, and that water was clear, and I could see up on that bank, but I couldn't get my feet. I couldn't get them under me. Something said, you want me to take you home now? No, Lord, not in this condition, no. He says, you coming out? You better get back. You say, oh, come on, preacher. You think what you want. Doesn't matter to me what you think. I know what happened. I went up to my sister. She only lived probably a mile from where I was at. They helped me get out of the water, and my brother and them laughing and cutting up and thought it was funny. What if I had to drown it there? I couldn't get my feet. Current was going. My feet was sliding in it. And the moment I told him, Lord, just let me out of here. I'll go with you. Boom, I come up. Went to my sister's house, soaking, ringing, cold, wet. She said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going back to God. That's what I'm doing. 
There's people like that out there. But if you've never been in that shape, thank God for it. But if you've been there, you, and listen, you look at these people, the world don't want them, brother. They don't want them. Why? Because they got too much of God on them. And God can't deal with them because they're trying to run from God, not come to him. Wake up, people. You're in. Thank God you're in. Thank God you've overcome some things. But there are people that are slipping. It's not time to call the dogs in. People are still dying and going to hell. But, yeah, people are backsliding and running from God, and God wants them to do some things. And they're blowing their testimony in front of a lost and a dying world. And they need to see something in them. That's Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. The cares of this life cause us to call in the dogs. Things that bring us down. We're present, we present ourselves to serve God, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. There are soldiers to be recruited. I remember listening to Dr. Ruttman. I listened to Dr. Ruttman or Jim White just about every morning. My wife said, what's going on in that bathroom? I thought you wanted to get a shower. I got him all over my phone and my little iPad thing, and I listened to Doc. <laughs> he gets the preaching in there. And he's a, I wouldn't have wanted to have been under him in his unit, I'm telling you. He just, he would have killed you. <laughs> Suck it up, boy. Suck it up. But. There's soldiers to be recruited. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long, long suffering and doctrine. He has chosen us to be soldiers, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. We're chosen to be soldiers of Jesus Christ. And then there's saints to be reassured. Please get them back out. You know somebody that's down. You don't have to. Well, well, they won't come back to this church. I'm not talking about coming back to the church. I'm talking about getting back in the fight. They can go somewhere else and get back in the fight. Well, Brother Bob, this. Hey, I tell you what. I'll apologize in five seconds. If they'll get back right with God, and if that's what it takes, I'll do it. It makes no difference. They need to get back in because the world is watching them and mocking them, and they're no good to God in that direction. The fears can bring on doubt. The devil can get you to start questioning whether you're saved or lost. I remember seeing an old boy, and it scared me when I was in Bible school, and I've told you this before. Brother, you ever see, uh, I don't know if you were there then or not, this old boy come down, and Doc had just preached on eternal security. And this old boy, he was probably 25, 30 years old. After a while, after you listened to him, he had gotten saved, but he didn't believe it set. He didn't believe he really did it right. Did I say it right? Hey, man, <laughs> whosoever called upon the name of the Lord shall be. And you know what Doc did? Doc did this. He stood there. He leaned on this podium. He said, you know what? Look at me. Did you do this? Did you do this? He said, yes, sir, I did, but I, I just don't know. I just don't know. He said, did you, did you say this? Did you ask Jesus Christ to say, yeah, did you trust in what Jesus Christ did at Calvary? Yes. He said, but this, this, this dust ain't going to hold me up. I'm getting ready to fall. I'm getting ready to fall. And that old boy looked at Doc. He says, you ain't going nowhere. That dust is holding you up. And Doc said, Jesus Christ is holding you up. You have his word on it. We need to get folks back into serving God again. People are doubting whether God's done anything for them or not. Listen, if, you, or if you're saved, you're saved. Anything you can do about it. And there's something God wants to use you with. I know how tough it is for Chuck and for Andy. I've been on those jobs. I've been out there. It's not easy because everybody wants to mock you. But the moment they bring Jesus out and you start talking about the Lord, it's like you just came up with the plague. They got to run everywhere. But, you know, it's not your job for the results. It's your job to put the seed in the ground. If you do that, 
You see, when there are saints to be reassured, and there's a Savior to be lifted up and rejoiced in. Not time yet, but I rejoice in my Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of it. People say, you act, I've had people say, you act, uh, you act a fool in the pulpit. I'd rather be a fool for Christ than a fool for this world. I've counted 15 grammatical errors. I said, is that all you were doing was counting? I would hope that something would have sunk through. Anybody sitting out there worried about how much the preacher knows in the sentence he didn't, and he put the, the exclamation point where there ought to be a question mark, you're not here to get something from God. You're here to see what you can do to bring down things. It ain't time to stop, brother. It's time to get fired back up. It's time to put some wood back on the fire. It's time to put responsibility back in your yard. And say, you know what? I've been put here for a reason. I talked with Ben yesterday when that happened. Didn't surprise God. God's going to take care of it. Amen. He's already in the process of taking care of it. But you know what he did, which is the right thing to do, and I didn't have to say a word to him. He's sitting right there in the same spot he sits in every day week. Don't call the dogs in yet. There's still work to be done. There's still some hunting. And you go out on the street corners. Now, winter time's coming in, but when we can go out there, it makes it hard for me personally to go to other places because by the time I get back, I don't have the strength I used to have. By the time I get ready to preach for Sunday night, I'm done after Sunday morning. But the point of it is, if I can get up there and get 15 minutes in, I'll try to get up there. I've been up there a few times. But don't stop preaching on the corner. So I hadn't seen anybody get saved. You don't know what happened down the road. Amen. You stay faithful to it. You don't know. I've, I've, I've been in Pensacola, and they hear it all the time. And I've, I've had say something, the wages of sin of death. <laughs> and I've had them roll down. Yeah, but the gift of God is eternal life. <laughs> Somebody going on down the road. I've had them throw ice cream at me one time. And the mother smacking them in the head as they're going. I said, ma'am, he can throw another one if you keep on hitting him. I still remember that old man. He got a thing where he's standing out there. And I think one of his favorite signs was turn or burn. He's standing out there, 92 years of age. Turn or burn! You're going to hell! So what is it? Wasn't time to call in the dogs for him. We need to stay. Look, it isn't about a crowd. We saw a crowd Friday night or Saturday night, Sunday night, whatever it was. We had a lot of people here. But God turned that thing around. Seven people raised their hand. I want to be saved. Thank God. Say, well, they used to. Doesn't matter how you get it, brethren. Amen. Doesn't matter how you get it. I got it. We need to still focus. Um, well, we want to have that. Quit looking at what we don't have. Start looking at who we do have. You hear me? I told you it wasn't going to keep you long. I'm trying to get, I'm really tinkering with starting to teach a little bit on Wednesday nights again because I want to get you out of here for eight, five minutes. Say, people like Andy got to get up, oh, dark 30. Amen. Some of you got to get up pretty early in the morning. So. Say, that wasn't much. Well, maybe you'll convince you to go out and tell someone about Jesus Christ. The biggest thing you are going to have to do one day, every man shall give an account of himself unto God. What did you do with the talent I gave you? What did you do with the time I gave you? Amen. Say, I'm not very talented. You got a tongue? If you had time, you can tell some people. 
Better still, why don't you let them see Jesus Christ in you? Tim Green is the guy that taught Dr. Ruckman hockey, got him infested with it. He went crazy over it. Tim Green said, I've had the privilege, Brother Hunter, of having my face spit in six, three times in my life because I talked to some people about Jesus Christ. He said, the only thing happened to me is it broke my heart that I haven't had more people that I could go to and tell. It matters not what they say or think of me if they trust the Savior. He said, I'd have punched him in the... I understand. And if you know Tim, he's a gentleman's gentleman. And he's an old hockey player. We would assume that he had been in a few scuffles in his life. But you know what he did? That's for you, Lord. If he can take a cross for you, you can take a few words for him. Okay? Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that you placed inside of us to guide us and lead us and direct us that urges and comforts us and picks us up when we're down and shows us in the way we ought to go. And Lord, help us, O oh God, that we'll stay strong and stay going in the direction you want us to go, not just worried about what is or what isn't. Just keep doing what we can do and allow you to take your place and position in our lives in this church in the preaching and the teaching of the Word of God. Pray now you'll give us traveling mercies, give Rest to the bodies tonight, Lord, that they can get some rest and work comes tomorrow. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.